So just recently I got asked about crampons and it kind of kind of spurred me to action again because I've been thinking about writing a kind of video blog about crampons, the styles of crampons and how they fit to different types of terrain. And often people who come on my courses ask me what style of crampon should I buy? So here we go. So if we just start at the most simplest form of crampon they can get, you know, for mountaineering anyway, then we have uh, this style of crampon. Now, just to start off with, all my crampons are made by Gravel. I'm not saying you should buy Gravel, these are just the ones that I have. And um, there are other styles out there. But see, at one time, it was fairly easy. You went to a shop, there was a very small selection of boots, you got ones that fitted your feet well, they gave you crampons, they generally fitted, you were happy. Now there's a whole load of different styles of boots, different styles of last, asymmetric, we go on, different styles for different purposes, different styles of terrain. And now trying to get a pair of crampons to actually fit them can sometimes be challenging. Sometimes you buy the boot you want and then you get the crampon you want and find they don't go together. So saying that, here we are. The most simplest form of crampon is a crampon like this, for mountaineering anyway. Uh, it's a very simple, non-aggressive type of crampon. It's normally got just 10 points. General mountaineering, where you may be covering, for example, a snowy glacier or easy terrain in the mountain. It's not meant for technical climbing. It's for helping you across slippy slopes. Quite short front points, and the points behind are really not aggressive. They're all very smooth, making it ideal for walking. It can also pass into many different styles of boots because the style of binding it has, which is called a new classic, can fit on many styles of boots. Also, the central bar on this type of crampon is very bendy, so it works very well with bendy boots. Hit by magic. Here is a general mountaineering boot, pretty good for summer into autumn and winter, as long as it's not too cold. See, it bends a bit. And that works very well with this style of crampon. Because if we had a more solid bar, more traditionally they were more solid, then it wouldn't bend and it would get metal fatigue and eventually would snap at an inappropriate moment. This style of crampon works really well with this style of mountaineering boot. But it's a really non-technical crampon. Moving up quickly, we move on to one which is really the standard type or crampon used for mountaineering. In this case it's called a Grivel G12. It's more aggressive. The front spikes here are longer. You see here the front other spikes, the secondary stabilization points here, are also more aggressive. It's also stiffer in the middle. So if you put this on a bendy boot after a while, it's going to bend and eventually this will snap. Again, on this type of crampon we have new classic binding. Traditionally, we would just have slings or leather straps and bind it around the boot. Now we have this style of crampon. Foot goes in the front and get these all to fit in here and the back part goes in there. Strap it up. Very versatile because it fits onto most boots if they're stiff enough. You can fit them on flexible boots, but they will eventually snap. This is a really good crampon to use, and I use this for most of my courses, and for most of the time, this is my go-to crampon when I'm in the mountains, because it fits so well to my boots, it's easy to put on, and it's good generally for mountaineering. I have climbed up to grade Norwegian 3, up to 4 in winter, on these with snow and ice on the route, and they work very well. That route, the majority, 99% of the day, was walking. And this worked very well for walking with a slight angle to climbing. Some of the guys on my climbing courses uh, climb up to water ice four in these and they seem to find that okay. Very good crampon. Not too heavy, quite light. My go-to crampon, that one. This crampon, which is really is the same as the last one, the G12, is the same style of crampon this time I have a, a, a new classic binding or bale at the front and a little kind of clip at the back. And this works really well with a new style of alpine boot. You see the front of the boot 
It doesn't have a lip. But the back part does have a lip. Now that's the style of boot which we use for alpine climbing. The reason not having a lip at the front means we can actually keep ourselves close to the rock when we're rock climbing. But for that, we need to have the crampon like this, which we fit in and we take the back clip and put it onto the lip. Click. Added advantage of this type of crampon is that we can get a really nice tight fit across the whole crampon. You can see here, we have a very good fit between the crampon and the boot, no air at all, and the same at the back. We need to make sure that when we fit our crampon, there's no movement at all. We should be able to take each spike and wiggle it around and get no movement at all. If you get any movement at all, it can be just really irritating. Even the smallest amount of little movement um, for example, we'll walk at the glacier, the boot will move backwards and forwards, and it'll just be irritating. It also means we can actually eventually lose our crampon, just fall off. When we come to climbing on steep neve or ice, or maybe some mixed climbing and rock, any movement at all, you'll feel even the smallest amount for your boot. It just becomes really irritating. It makes it quite difficult to climb. It also means as well, if there's movement around, the crampon can actually fall off. It's a good idea to shake it around. Any movement, you need to readjust the crampon. This is a pretty standard sort of alpine boot which people use now. And this is a pretty decent sort of crampon setup. Okay. So moving on quickly again to more technical. So these crampons down below, walking crampon, and there were two G12s. These are more mountaineering, leaning towards climbing. Climb some pretty technical routes with these. But they're really good for mountaineering, especially for the walking part of the day. Moving now to a more aggressive crampon. This one's actually uh, made by Gribble again, it's G14. It's a much more aggressive crampon throughout the whole area, especially at the front. This crampon has these sort of blades here, the front points. Put them in a crack and you'll see them flex a bit. These ones, the front points are placed vertically. You can see here they're placed vertically and that means there's no give whatsoever in them. You can stand on the smallest little rock edge and they won't bend. The whole crampon is more aggressive. This is definitely climbing, leaning towards mountaineering. Still a pretty decent crampon for walking in the mountains but it's going to be really good on steep buttresses, snow ice and ice water ice climbing. It also has the added advantage of this style of crampon that you can change the dual points here to a singular point for ice climbing or mixed climbing. Best of both worlds. A bit heavy, but still pretty decent, solid crampon. For that type of crampon, you're going to have to have a stiff, rigid boot. If by magic again, a really good, a bit old school, solid winter mountaineering boot. Which you place in the crampon. Put it in, click, you hear, really solid, bang as it goes in. This type of pneumatic binding with a front metal bale and a plastic clip at the back means you get a really good solid fit. Shake it around, there's going to be no movement. Like I said before, if there's movement, you need to sort that out straight away. Even the smallest amount, even walking on flat ground, it's just going to be really, really irritating and could make the crampon fall off at an inappropriate moment. One of the things you have to be really aware of with this lip at the front is that if you're walking in, say, in Scotland or in Norway, where there could be a bit of streams to go through or a bit of you know, soggy snow, you can get a little bit of ice building up in that lip. If you don't clear it out with your ice axe before you put this metal bar in, it can, just when you're climbing up, not really get seated very well and ping off at an inappropriate moment. I think people that climb a lot who have this style of crampon all have stories at some point of the crampon falling off and um, it's just really irritating especially if you happen to be on the crux move or something like that. Yeah, it's just not fun at all. So something to be aware of with this style of crampon is to make sure that this part fits very well. It can be annoying. You find the boots work really well, you really want these crampons and then when you put them on this metal bale just doesn't sit so well on the shape of boot. So you have to mess around. You may even have to buy a different style of bale. Uh, uh, some people think about modifying it, 
hitting the hammer. I'm not so sure that's a good idea with this type of metal, but I'm not a metallurgist, so maybe it's okay. Normally I've tried it myself a bit and it just springs back again. But you need to modify it, but you get a good sit throughout the whole of that lip, or it can just ping off when you don't want it to. Really great cramp on, must fit onto a solid boot, similar to this style. Okay, get them off now. So there it is, just a bit tangled up a bit. Quickly moving on to the last style of crampon, which um, is a bit old school again, uh, but they are on the top end of the aggressive range of crampons. These are really designed for climbing and climbing a lot, and especially this one, high end climbing. Monopoint with a secondary stabilization point. The front part of the crampon is all swept forward. So you can really aggressively bite into steep ice. These back spikes, again, reversing out backwards. So if you put it into a feature, like a hole in the ice, you can really grip and drag your body in. Body in. Body in. There you go. And this is a particularly aggressive crampon throughout. Made by Grivel, and it's called Rambo, ironically. Again, you need to have a completely stiff boot. Metal bail at the front clip at the back. Very good for climbing, not so good for mountaineering. If you're going to be walking around the top of your mountain looking for the next climb or just general mountaineering between climbs, this crampon really isn't going to be the best one to use. Great for climbing, not so good for mountaineering. You need better off a crampon like this, this style of crampon, which is pretty decent for mountaineering. The back spikes here aren't super aggressive so they're good for gripping in snow or ice or walking around, but they're not. This one is getting snagged all the time and it should be rather irritating. So, just to recap 10 point walking crampon, very flexible, fits all types of boot, general mountaineering, not for climbing. And, you know, really not for climbing. General mountaineering crampon, brilliant for mountaineering leaning towards climbing, my go-to crampon for mountaineering courses. G14, stiffer crampon, climbing, leaning towards mountaineering. So this is really good cramp crampon for technical routes, be it on rock, snow or ice, but also pretty decent crampon for walking around as well. And the last crampon is a technical climbing Steep buttress, mixed roots, and ice climbing. Totally climbing, not very good for mountaineering. So there you go. Hope that helped.